Today, we're going to talk about an interesting piece of Sonic history. When Sonic the Hedgehog was released in 1991, the Sega Genesis had already been out for two years in North America. Sega was cutting into Nintendo's market share, but without a marquee mascot like Nintendo's Mario, Sega was at risk of falling further behind Nintendo with the impending release of the Super Nintendo in North America. In June 1991, two whole months before the North American launch of the Super Nintendo, Sonic the Hedgehog was released upon the world, and the blue blur gave Sega something it sorely lacked. An answer to Mario. With the breakout success of Sonic, it was no surprise that Sega wanted, maybe even needed, another Sonic game. Development of Sonic 2 started just five months after the release of Sonic 1 in November 1991. The game was completed and released a year later in November 1992. However, the focus of this episode centers around a version of the game stolen from Sega earlier in 1992. According to Sonic creator Yuji Naka, a prototype cartridge was stolen from a New York toy show in 1992. This stolen version would circulate in parts of Asia and South America as a pirated copy bootleggers were trying to pass off as the completed game. Prior to 1999, North American Sonic fans had no idea this prototype existed. That changed when Simon Y located the ROM on a Chinese website and released it online. This would become known as the first Sonic 2 prototype to be found. Today it's most definitely not the only Sonic 2 prototype available, it wasn't the first build of the game, but it also nowhere near completion, but it's arguably the most well known and most notable for giving us a peek at what could have been. What is contained in this prototype? Let's take a closer look. Well the first thing I noticed is the lack of the famous Sega jingle. We just boot into a very different title screen than the final version. The familiar level title cards are missing too, and for some reason we're starting with the Aquatic Ruin Zone instead of Emerald Hill. Well, this was an early build of the game, so I guess they moved around levels during development. Hmm, this seems pretty easy so far, doesn't it? Well, a common theme with this prototype is the lack of object placement in all the levels. In particular, enemies and some monitors are missing, but there are rings, so at least there's something to do. Some hazards are present depending on the level, and it just shows that different stages were at different points in development. I have heard that the infamous drowning music I use in my intro isn't present, but yeah, I'm not risking it. When you complete a level, there is no end of act screen, no score tally, and we just get the end of act jingle, and we move on to the next act rather abruptly. It's actually rather jarring. The main game zones do all have second acts, but I'll leave those for another time. After Aquatic Ruin, we move on to Chemical Plant Zone. Here I'm showing off the infamous Act 2 that has the rising death water. At least this is the second level as it should be. It's in this level in particular that you really start to notice how slow Sonic is. One of the notorious features of Sonic 1 was a speed cap that prevented Sonic from going too fast, but in this game it's a real chore just to get around. It makes even the most routine tasks seem difficult. The Spin Dash was still in its early development too. You can't rev it up, and it really doesn't feel like you're getting any faster. There were times I actually felt like it slowed me down. Take this part for example. This is a little known upper path of the act that allows you to avoid the scary water altogether, and it requires jumping to this platform. I just can't muster up the speed to do so. Whew, there we go. I always take this path regardless of the version I'm playing. I probably should have showed off the fact that the moving platforms you would normally use to get past the giant water pits are actually smaller, and thus it's more difficult to land on, but let's just coast through to an easy victory. You fall through here, and normally you'd catch a boss, but not today. Guess I should have mentioned we don't have any bosses in this prototype either. Next up, Hilltop Zone, and... Holy crap, this song is slow! This is Act 2, and it's in this level that you start to notice a horrible flaw that thankfully was fixed later. Yup. Tails getting hurt makes you lose your rings. Tails is barely programmed, he only vaguely mirrors your actions, and he doesn't even try to follow you. He goes off on his own and magically reappears when he inevitably dies. Well, 
I guess some things never change. Let's move on. Emerald Hill. Normally the first level of the game is the fourth for some reason, and what is this? Enemies? A snail enemy that was scrapped from the final game at that. I guess they saved the best for last in this particular build, as this is by and far the most playable level in the game. The level layout seems pretty complete, and there are multiple enemy types in this level, although all the final enemies don't seem to be present. There are still some monitors and signposts that are missing, and... Oh, come on! That just wasn't fair. Anyway, there are subtle differences, but by and large, this is complete and just as enjoyable as the final game. It's clear this was one of the first levels they programmed and finished. Now, this is Act 1. I'm not going to show off Act 2, but Act 2 is pretty much like the first in that it's pretty close to completion, except for the same polish that's missing from first act. Now, there is something that Act 2 does have that I want to show off once we get past this end of level jingle. That's right, Act 2 does have its level boss programmed in. It's the only boss in the game, and, well, he's just as easy as ever. Seems to be taking its time, though. Ah, there he is. Let's get him, Tails. Oh, Tails! You need to stop losing my rings, buddy. This boss functions just like it does on the final game, so let's take care of him. Alright, well, he doesn't explode, and he's going backwards. Lovely. Oh hey look, the Sega Jingle is in here after all. Well, that does it for the main game, but fear not, there is more. By pressing A and hitting start, you bring up this level select menu. As you can see, there's a lot more here than just the four levels. Let's go through them in order, starting with Green Hill Zone. Okay, well it's just Emerald Hill Zone. I guess they hadn't changed the name yet. Moving on, let's try Wood Zone. Alright, now we're cooking. This was one of the scrap levels that was planned for the game. This is a wooded themed level, but unfortunately, this is about as far as you can go under normal circumstances. Well, let's try and see if Act 2 has anything more for us to check out. Okay, that's a no. Moving on. Ugh, Metropolis Zone. In the interest of full disclosure, I really hate Metropolis Zone. Yep, that's about right. When I was a kid, a big part of the reason I never beat this game was because of my disdain for this level and, well, crap like that. Otherwise, I'm kind of surprised at how complete this level layout feels. There are no rings in addition to no enemies, but otherwise it feels like this was pretty far along. Well. That is, until you hit a dead end. I'm not sure if this is really where the level stops or not, but I'm ready to move on. Let's try Act 2. Again, this layout feels pretty complete. Uh, except we're immune to lava. Well, that's nice. Actually, I'm serious. That is nice. Hilltop Zone's lava hurts, so... Clearly, this stage was not as far along in development as Hilltop was at the time of its, well, not release, but let's just call it release. Hmm. I do like that we can get a little further along than Act 1. Let's try this out. Oh, come on. Let's try that again, because it actually looks like we can beat this level. Alright, we got past. Well, despite the fact that I really dislike Metropolis Zone, I actually want to see if we can beat this. Everything seems to be functioning, and without enemies and only a few BS hazards, it feels like it's pretty okay, so let's try it. Well, it would really be nice to get some rings, although without enemies, it doesn't seem to matter. Alright, this should be the end. Except, hey, wait a minute, what, what? Oh, come on. Well, you can't beat it because there's no signpost, and you just run off to your death, so let's try Act 3. Still no rings, still no enemies, but the layout feels pretty good. This is something that was in the final game. Oh, look, Sonic's dancing. I haven't explored much, but I have heard there are some goodies in this le- 
Whatever, I'm done. Next is Hilltop Zone. We've already seen that, so there's no need to try again. Ah, uh, Hidden Palace Zone. This is what I'm talking about. This level is pretty dang popular among Sonic fans as the level that never was. It was the final of the scrap levels to be removed from the game. Before these prototypes were common knowledge, everyone still knew about the Hidden Palace Zone. Oh look, Tails' face is in the 1-Up monitor. No matter, it's mine anyway. As a kid, I had heard about a Hidden Palace Zone that was so secret, no one knew how to get to it. The proof was in the original sound test, as there was an unused track that couldn't be found anywhere else in the game. Also, using a Game Genie on the final game can actually send you to this level. But, it's a jumbled mess that had all of this nice design and artwork deleted. Hello, what is this? Ah, yes, of course. A rather humorous programming oversight causes the Death Egg Zone music to play when you collect 100 rings instead of the 1-Up theme. Also, that jump is extremely tricky. It took me about five attempts to get it right. Many people thought this level was going to be a hidden level that was somehow tied to Super Sonic, much in the same way Sonic 3 and Knuckles' is a hidden palace zone is. This giant emerald was the source of all the speculation. It was even hinted as much by a member of the Sonic 2 development team, although nothing has ever been officially confirmed. Once you reach this area, you reach a dead end. You can jump around, but this really was the level in its final form before being scrapped that we know of. Shame, too. I personally think this level looks great, although it's been said by Yuji Naka that it was scrapped because it wasn't as fun as the rest of the game. Who am I to disagree? For many Sonic 2 fans, this zone right here is all the reason you need to download and play this prototype. A mock-up image of this level was included in various publications as a promotional image. This, combined with its technical inclusion in the final game, caused this level to be one that has had Sonic fans talking for years. So much so that it was actually officially finished and put into the mobile version that was released in 2013. The finished version is a complete optional level that doesn't have anything to do with Super Sonic and can be found throughout regular gameplay. Oh, and Act 2, you're stuck at a wall. For what it's worth, the finished level in the mobile version was only one act long. Not surprising when you see they would have had to build a complete level from scratch instead of finishing what was already started. Well, I think it's time to move on. Next, we have Oil Ocean Zone. Much like Metropolis, I didn't care for Oil Ocean, although I like it more than Metropolis. Oh look, a ball. And you can stand on it. This was actually a scrap mechanic that I read was intended to be part of the original game, but was never put in, and as far as I'm aware, it wasn't put into any of the Sonic games on Genesis, although it may have been implemented in later games that I'm not aware of. Alright, um... Well, I appear to be stuck. Can I get out? Maybe... no... Hmm. Well... Whatever. I guess I'll just die. Act 2. Well, it's actually more of the same. This is as good a time as any to mention that the music in a lot of these levels is much different than the final versions. Some levels like this have songs that ended up being reassigned to different levels, and almost all the songs in this prototype are not in their final form. You know, I actually have nothing else to say about this. Just can't get the motivation to do well in this level. Next. Hmm, let's see. Uh, oh, Dust Hill Zone. Or it's Mystic Cave Zone. Alright. Well... This certainly looks dangerous. Hmm. I want to see more of this madness. Let's try it again, but... I noticed there was an upper path. Let's take that. Yeah, the upper path is always safer in a Sonic game, right? Oh, look okay. Oh, we almost died. And we are dead. No one told me there was a death wall there. Alright, let's try this one more time, but... Maybe with feeling. Let's take that upper path again. Alright, get this timing, and stop. Great. Haha, <laughs> death wall. You can't kill me. 
Well, maybe I probably should have let it. The rest of this stage, as well as Act 2, is a lot of layout, but no object placement, no enemies, no nothing. In fact, both acts actually have some death pits that you can get stuck in, much like the final version of the game. Honestly, what's most interesting about this is the fact that it's called Dust Hill Zone at all. I mentioned mock-up images of Hidden Palace Zone were used by Sega as promotional images, but there was also a mock-up for a level that has since become known as Dust Hill Zone. However, in this image, Sonic is running through a desert theme level. It looks nothing like this Dust Hill Zone that was later renamed into Mystic Cave Zone. There's no telling if Dust Hill Zone was always meant to be Mystic Cave or not, but... Uh... We're in a pit. Let's just move on. Alright, let's see, we've got... Ah uh, oh yes, Casino Night is next. To <laughs> what? Wow, this is very pink and looks nothing like the final. Also very jumbled and it's hard to move around. And... I'm dead. Fantastic. Well, what do you expect? It is a prototype. Let's try Act 2. Maybe Act 2 will be nicer to us. What the? Man, and I thought Act 1 was trippy. Still very... oh. Okay? No. We need to try that again. As I was saying, it's still very hard to move around, but... It shouldn't be that difficult, right? Oh. Maybe we can spin dash through this. <laughs> no. Alright, next is Chemical Plant Zone. We no need to revisit this, so let's move on to... Genocide City? Yeesh, Sega! The title of this zone alone has made this level infamous. And it's nothing. Nothing at all. Apparently Metropolis Zone ended up as a three-act zone because Genocide City was scrapped and the design was turned into Metropolis' third act. Maybe it's in Act 2. No. Well, let's see, we've got two left. Neo Green Hill Zone. We had Green Hill, this is Neo Green Hill. It's Aquatic Ruin. Next. Death Egg Zone. Death indeed. No music either. Huh. <laughs> Maybe Act 2 will have something for us. Ah, hell. The special stage selection does nothing, but the sound test appears to be fully functional. Certainly there are more things going on in this game than I showed off. There's a debug mode that I didn't show off, and that feature is certainly helpful in exploring and seeing everything this game has to offer. I didn't show it off because, well, I wouldn't want to give away all of this game's secrets now, would I? So there you have it. It's not often that betas and prototypes for games such as this ever see the light of day. By releasing it, Simon Y generated a huge amount of fan interest in the development of these Sonic games. And there are tons of betas and prototypes out there for all of our favorite games. We just don't know about them because they generally don't get released. And that's what makes it so interesting and so special that this particular beta was released. In doing so, now there are tons of betas and prototypes that are out there and we know about them. And that all started with the release of the Simon Y prototype. There are websites such as Sonic Retro that chronicle all of these different builds and prototypes, and if you're interested in learning more, I highly recommend you go and check out those websites. You might even be able to find a link to download some of these and play them yourselves. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.